Hey, hello friends and welcome to Retro Portal Studio and in this video we're going to be taking a look at creating this focused pop-up menu in Flutter. You can see that when I long press on an item, the items comes in focus and all the other content on the screen gets blurred. You can also see that when I click on the bottom item, the menu appears on top and when I click on a top item, the menu appears on bottom. Essentially, this package looks at the available space on the screen and displays the menu accordingly. In this example, I've added this pop-up menu to each of the item in this grid view, but essentially you can add this to any widget on the screen. Due to the complexity involved, I have created a package that you can directly add to your Flutter project and add this pop-up menu to your own Flutter applications. If you want to learn more about how this package works internally, you can take a look at this article on Medium. This article goes into detail on how this package actually works. And if you have any questions regarding this article, you can post them in the response section right here. Now, let's take a look at how to use this package in your own Flutter applications. Okay, so right now I'm in a simple Flutter app in which I just have this my home page. And in this, I have a scaffold which has a container for its body. In the container, I have this column. And for the first child of this column, there is a row. And in the row, I have this text view and this icon and a circular avatar. For the second child of this container, after the sized box, I have this text field that you can see right here. And after the text field, I have a row in which there is this drop down and a simple icon right here. Below this, there is an expanded widget that takes the rest of the space. And as a child of this expanded, I have a grid view in which all these images are being displayed. At this point, if I long press on any of the grid view item, nothing happens because each of the item is just a simple card. I can see that I have a column as a child of this car, which there is no use of, so I'll just remove this. Along with this layout, in the application directory, I also have this assets folder in which I have all the images. Now, let's take a look at how to add that pop-up menu to each of the item in this grid view. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the pubspec.yaml file, and in the dependencies section, we need to add the dependency for focused menu, and this is currently at version 1.0.0. Once this is added, you need to click on pubget and add this dependency to the application. After this, you can close the pubspec.yaml file. Now to use this package in the main.dart file, we need to wrap each of the item of this grid view with a focused menu holder. This focused menu holder class is given to us by the focused menu package that we just added. So this focused menu holder requires two properties to start with. One is on pressed, and for this, I'll just pass in an empty function this on press function will trigger whenever the user just clicks on this item rather than performing a long press the next property that is required by this focus menu holder is menu items and you can see that this takes a list of focused menu item and for this i'll pass in a list of focused menu item i'll just minimize the emulator for now i'll add the first item to this list and this is going to be of type focused menu item here you can see that the focused menu item requires at least two properties, that is the title and on pressed. For the on pressed, I'll just pass in an empty function for now. And for the title, we can just pass in any widget. In this case, I'll just pass in a text. And in the text, I'll just write open. For now, what I'll do is I'll just copy this item and add a duplicate and change the text to share. And at this point, if I close and run the app once again, you can see that when I long press on an item, a menu appears with two options of open and share. And if I click on the bottom item, the menu appears on top. Now, let's take a look at some customizations that we can add to these menu items. For this, I'll just minimize the emulator and come back to this focused menu item. In this focused menu item, you can see that we have two more properties available. That is the background color and trailing icon. So this trailing icon property requires an icon widget. And in this, I'll just pass in an icon of icons dot open in new. Now what I'll do is I'll go to the second item and here I'll also add the trailing icon and I'll copy this focused menu item two more times and I'll change the text and icons for these. Now just for the last item, I'll also add in a background color and for this I'll pass in colors dot red accent. Now because of the background color, I'll make the text white and I'll reformat the code and I'll also change the color of the trailing icon to white. At this point, if I run the app and now if I long press on an item, you can see that the menu appears and the last item of this menu is red in color and the color of the text and the icon is white. So you can add as many customizations as you want for each of the menu item. And along with this, there are a lot of customizations that you can add to this focused menu. So let's take a look at each of them. 
The first customizations that we can take a look at is the blur amount and the blur background color. For this, we can come up to the focused menu holder and we can add in blur size. The default blur for this menu is five, so you can change this according to your own needs. For example, I'll set this to two and I'll also change in the blur background color and I'll set its value to colors.white. At this point, if I run the app, you can see that when I long press on an item, the amount of blur is reduced and the background color of the blur is also changed to white. We can also set the blur size to zero and if I run the app now and long press on an item, there is no blur at all. So I'll change the blur back to four and I'll change the background color of the blur to black. And the next customization that we can do is change the width of the menu. For this, we can pass in a property of menu width. For now, as a value for this menu width, I'll just pass in media query dot off context dot size dot width into 0.5. If I run the app again, you can see that when I long press on an item, the width of the menu is now 50% of the width of the screen. And like the width of the menu, we can also change the height of each menu item. For this, we have to pass in the property of menu item extent. For now, I'll just pass in a height of 70. And if I run the app once again, you can see that as the menu appears, each of the item in the menu has a height of 70. One more thing you can observe with this menu is when the menu appears, there's a small animation that is taking place. You can also turn this animation off. For this, you can just pass in a property of animate menu items and set this to false. Now, if you open up the menu, there's no menu item animation. Along with all this, if you want to make the transition of this menu smooth, you can pass in a property of duration. And for now, if I set the value of duration to a milliseconds of 500, you can see that the menu appears quite smoothly and it goes away in the same way. This duration property basically changes the time in which the menu appears. For now, I'll set this back to 200 and we can now take a look at the last property of customization that is the menu box decoration. And this menu box decoration basically applies to the box that is holding the menu items. For this, we can pass in a box decoration and for now, I'll set the color to colors.blue and I'll also add a box shadow and for this, I'll pass in a box shadow of colors.red. I'll set the blur radius to 5 and a spread radius to 1 and now if I run the app once again, you can see that the box that contains the menu has a shadow of red color and the background color between each of the menu item is blue. I'll remove the menu box decoration for now. You can see that there are a lot of customizations that you can add to this focused pop-up menu. And if you have any other suggestions in mind, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll consider adding them to the package. I hope you find this video useful and if you do, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and also consider rating this article on Medium and consider supporting this package on PubDev. You can also check out the code for this package on GitHub and take a look at the example code right here. See you next time. Peace.